Jason, jingle all the way, wild ones. It's Bernadette. I am here with your pick a card tarot reading for Saturday, December 12th, 2020. The chakra is the third eye chakra. The governing planet is Saturn. It's go, go, go. And if you're like me, it is really go, go, go. I am trying to meet deadlines by the end of the year like nobody's business. So it is, uh, you know, it's holiday time. There's all this stuff going on for everybody. And I also just want to uh, point out before we get to the card of the day, show you as a hint to what's forthcoming is my um, one of my astrology shirts that I bought because I am taking a deep dive into everybody's zodiac sign. Why? Because it is your original birth totem and know thyself, right? Aristotle, wise fella. So <clears throat> uh, over the next few months, We'll be taking a look at all the animals of the zodiac signs, how you apply that to your love life, your career, your home life, yourself. Just get to know yourself a little more deeply. And that way, when uh, you're working with other spirit animals, you can see how kind of those energies will work together or repel each other. Uh, you know, just uh, everything you ever wanted to know about your zodiac sign, I'm your girl. All right. So today's card, man, I, ah, I've been waiting for this card to come out for you guys. It's the beaver. It is the seven of cups. Now, the Seven of Cups in the traditional Rider weight Tarot, we're, I'm just, there's so much to know about this card. We're just going to jump right in. And it is, um, if you take a look at the uh, image, you'll see this, this fellow standing there in front of seven gold chalices, all filled to overflowing with all kinds of things on a cloud in the sky. And this card is about dreams. It's about deception. It's about determination. So... That's a like a triple threat, like nobody's business, you know, like in old Hollywood, you, you, you couldn't get signed on with a with a studio unless you were the triple threat. You could sing, dance and act. Well, that's what I equate the seven of cups with dreams, deception, and determination. The overriding message, uh, you know, symbolic meaning of the seven of cups is that you can achieve whatever you want to achieve and your dreams can be as big as they want to be as long as you're not deceiving yourself. Do you really want to accomplish that? Um, are you going to get like immersed in it so much that it just takes you over and there's nothing else in your life? Um, you know, almost like where you get absorbed into your own dreams, which the way you go about them, the way you, you make it happen may end up being a fallacy. It may just be an illusion in your own mind and you may fall flat on your face. It happens, right? That doesn't mean that you shouldn't get up again and you shouldn't try again. Of course you should, but but maybe now you'll have the wisdom and you'll have the understanding um, and you won't be a quitter. Ooh, spirit animals don't like quitters. The, the universe does not like quitters but it, because it's not possible to quit, right? Your spirit lives on. Your soul lives on. You're always a living thing. You're always in an evolution. It is not physically, scientifically, well, I can't prove it scientifically, but emotionally, spiritually, you can't stop. There's no, there's no such thing. Even when you're, you know, pushing up daisies in this life, you're still evolving to a next life. So uh, when people are just like, I'm done, I'm at the end of my rope. I can't go on anymore. I'm like, what does that really mean? What do you mean you can't go on anymore? You can't cease to exist. That's what I can't go on anymore really means that you're going to cease to exist. And since that's an impossibility, let's get with the programs, dry your eyes. All right. Have a, have a, have some ice cream, have a drink, and do something, you know, just give yourself some self-care and let's move on. And that's what this card is all about, which is why Beaver wanted to be the Seven of Cups in the, um, in the Arc Tarot deck. And for those of you um, just joining and thank you to all this, all you subscribers and um, all my, all, all the wild pack and the wild ones, because we are the wild ones. Thank you for subscribing. If you're new, I read from my own, um, Award-winning, history-making, best-selling. I know you guys are tired of me saying that, but I have to. I'm supposed to. Um, Arc Tarot and Oracle deck, and uh, it is based on the Rider Waite deck, and it does marry all of the uh, animal totems and spirit animals and power animals just to give much deeper, richer, um, just more accurate readings is, is what I've found and, and people that are reading with it have found. So all of that said, um, when you take a look at, and I'm going to jump away from the Rider Waite card for just a second, and then we're going to come back to it. But when you take a look at beavers, they are miraculous little critters. Um, one of the things I think is so fascinating about them is they're, they, have been, um, they have been known to build a dam that's a half a mile long. As a matter of fact, and I'm going to read this to you because I was just reading this this morning, 
the world's largest beaver dam stretches almost, it's, they have 850 meters. I had to look that up. It's a half a mile deep in the thick wilderness of Northern Alberta. Of course it has to be Canada. And it was discovered after being spotted on satellite, you guys, on satellite. Now, scientists believe that multiple generations of beavers have been working on this dam since the 1970s. And last September, which I don't know, it was just a, I guess, just a, I guess back in 2007, or when, I don't even know when it was, but uh, yes, actually it was in 2015, um, uh, Rob Mark, hello, Rob Mark, became the first person ever to actually reach the dam. So what that tells me in correlation with the Seven of Cups, again, this is not telling you not to dream big. The Seven of Cups doesn't say that at all. What the Seven of Cups says is be willing to work for it and be willing to be, you know, when beavers are making dams, they are, they are the original DIYers, DIYers, right? Do it yourself. They've got to find the trees. They've got to cut down the trees. They've got to strip the wood. They've got to make it fit. And to, to say that there would be probably literally at least, what, a million or more branches and twigs in a dam that was a beaver dam that's like a half a mile long? Holy cow. Of course, it probably took umpteen generations, right? Maybe. But that is another thing about the seven uh, about the seven of cups, and we'll get right back to that. So when when you are figuring out what twigs and branches you want to build your own dam with or your own empire with, or it doesn't even have to be an empire. I um I I uh it doesn't even have to be an empire. It, it can be your empire, which can be just like, hey, I want to have more time to make more brownies to take down to my church or to my group, or to my club, or to my friends or family, and how am I going to build that time into my schedule? That seems very simple, but as a person who invests like 12, 15 hours a day in creating things um, for you guys, uh, for which is my business, yes, but it's what I choose to do, uh, in creating you know, all these other things that, that, that go into making my business run, and then trying to find time or making, you know, just making the decision to, to make time for a personal thing. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of illusion that goes on in my life. You know what? I'll be finished by four. I'll see you guys by six. <sighs> Can't make it. I'm so sorry. You know, that kind of thing. I'm getting better with it, but, and it's, it's not about me, but it's using it as an example of you, you don't have to decide you want to be Bill Gates or the president of the United States or, you know, create whatever, but you can and you have the support of the animal kingdom and you have the support of the seven of cups if you want to take it that far and beyond, right? And let's say that you're reading for somebody and they want to take it that far and beyond, that's awesome. But they've got to have a clear, realistic understanding of what it takes to get there. Nothing is unachievable. Everything is achievable as long as you see it the right way. One of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite things is when people in the new age, metaphysical, spiritual, whatever, whatever label you give it, they say, um, well, if it's meant to be, it will be. What, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? I, I get it at some kind of root level, what it's supposed to mean. But if you're not aware of a plan of action, if you haven't been part of making that plan of action, what, what do you think is going to happen? Now that said, it could be argued, there is, a, there is a flip side to that. It could be argued that the trust that the series of events that are going to unfold, the trust that there is a series of events that's going to unfold that will then catapult that person to what their dream is, what their desire is, their goal is, or carry them along gently, that's entirely possible. But that is like trying to put yourself in a raft and just go down a river with rapids, holding on to the boat, going, I trust. Bernadette needs a paddle. <laughs> okay, Bernadette needs a life vest. But Bernadette needs a plan. And that's what the Seven of Cups is telling you. You've got to have a plan. Now, does a beaver sit and do a schematic, a blueprint? I don't know. They might do it in their head. I don't know. They might build it intuitively. I don't know. I will ask beavers and see what they say, but I know that they know that they know because it gets done. 
and it gets done in what I think is a timely fashion. And the reason that I think it's a timely fashion and suits their needs and their goals best, and that they are meeting their goals is they're not living on the streets of the forest. They're living in their dams. They might do a camp over while they're building their dams, you know, a little fire, some s'mores, you know, whatever kind of beer or, you know, after drink that beavers drink, um, you know, fires or, you know, stories, or stories, uh, ghost stories, you know, about other animals. I, I can see it all. Right. Okay. But where I'm going with this is, is they have a plan because it gets done. Now, taking a look at the seven of cups again, let's switch back to that. Um, again, it, it's important just sometimes fantasies are best left fantasies. The joy that you get out of fantasizing about what could be, what it would feel like, what, okay. And that's why the Kabbalists call this card, the Lord of Illusory Success. It's not saying that you won't have success. It is saying that you could have, but here's what could trip you up and you not get to where you want to go and you face plant where you stand. Now in this card, Venus and Scorpio infuses the consciousness with overpowering emotion. Remember cups, the suit of cups is all water. It's all emotion. It really is the most immature suit in the, in the, in the deck, meaning it's where emotion rules everything. There's not a lot of logic. There's not a lot of organization. There's not a lot of maturity. It's like a kid. You're going, you're driving and moving strictly on emotion. Sometimes that's a really good thing. Sometimes it's not so much. It's just smoke and mirrors. Now, the clouds in the Seven of Cups symbolize divine communication in the other tarot suits. But in the cups, they often warn of illusion and self-deception. And it's like that pie in the sky, clouds in the sky kind of mentality. Um, but, but that's okay because dreams and the emotions attached to them, that's, that's your catalyst, right? That's the thing that drives you forward. But now you want to get out of the emotion so much that you now take a look at, here's what needs to be done. And if you, I, I just had this conversation with a friend of mine literally last night, my best friend, um, he has approached me with a business opportunity. And man, I want to do it. Oh, yes, I do. And man, what it's going to take to get this going. Woo -hoo -hoo! So I pulled the car. Oh my gosh, y'all, what, what was I thinking this morning? What, what am I thinking? Oh my gosh, I pulled this card last night about, uh, uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm in shock. I pulled this card last night about this thing we want to do together and, and got the same, very much the same warnings. Um, and then the rest of it was like, yeah, it, like it's an ordained thing. It's a sacred contract thing, but you, you guys are both going to learn the lesson of taking it slow and easy, slow and easy. You're not going to become all consumed with this building, this business, like you do other things. And here it is this morning for y'all. Durr. Okay. So all of that said, um, when you take a look at, um, the, the left side of the card, that is about material fulfillment, sex, security, wealth, the cups, the chalices on the right. That's like your emotional needs, your knowledge, your power, your success. But the cup in the very middle, it, it can be a very dangerous cup because it contains the illusion of spiritual enlightenment. And the female figure in that cup is veiled very much like the high priestess in the major arcana. But the red aura shows that she's only a projection of her own desires. And that tells you that you're a projection of your own desires. You're not making the magic happen. You're desiring that the magic is going to happen. Oh, two different things. That said, the, it's, it's much easier to tell the difference between illusion and reality than you might think. And if it's real, it'll still be there tomorrow. This particular, so for instance, this particular business venture, somebody out there has thought of it, I'm sure but nobody's done anything about it. It's like finding a unicorn, no joke. <laughs> really, it's like finding a unicorn. So when the Seven of Cups comes to you um, upright, it is a powerful opportunity to test your own character, to learn more about yourself. And it's it, it, it gives you almost permission to explore your wildest fantasies. And again, you guys listen, the only reason I do the work that I do is 
I want, again, uh, it's why I did the acting business. It's why I turned from doing the acting and the comedy and the everything myself. Um, well, part of the reason, um, there wasn't a great opportunity for fat girls when I was, you know, growing up in the business. The, the opportunities were very, very few and far between. Um, and I needed to eat. So becoming a manager and a master level acting coach, it, 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 it was the way everything was supposed to be because my, my thrill in helping people self-actualize, huh, that's what drives me every day. And it's why ultimately I came into the metaphysical business. Nothing will help you find your personal power. Nothing like understanding that there is a world beyond this world. And we're actually living in the world that's beyond this world. There's a world that we live in that's beyond what we've been shown and what we've been taught, indoctrinated, conditioned at all. And, and, and you have access to that anytime you want. And getting to your core, right, the animalistic part of you, the, the part of you that, that incarnated into this world, that very simple, powerful part of you that is spirit animal, that is totem animal, that is power animal, that can give you strength like nothing else. Now you start to marry that with the, with the seven of cups and everything's going to lead you to higher learning. It's going to be, um, your awareness will grow. You, your intuition will grow. Your, your drive, your ambition will grow. That said, that all depends on what your moral compass is. And Bernadette doesn't talk about morals. That's none of my business, right? I have my own opinions. You have your own opinions. However, it, it, when you're starting to want to do something, so for instance, um, the other day I ordered a necklace uh, from Kohl's. I had a big sale. I ordered a necklace. And I only paid for one and showed up two. And don't you know I'm going to tote that, that, that second one back down to the store, our local store, and I'm going to say, here it is. I didn't pay for it. Put it back in stock. And that's because uh, it would eat at me. Oh my God. I would feel so oily. Ooh. I have driven four and five miles to take 65 cents back to a cashier. No joke. Really. I'm not crazy about it. So when, when you are looking at creating something, when you want to build whatever your big half mile dam is, your empire, I would invite you to really examine what your moral compass is and what you want, what in, what, energy you want to infuse what you're doing is and don't cut corners because if you cut corners your dam is going to come crashing down right on your little pumpkin head it always does it always will it may not be today it may not be tomorrow it may be 50 years from now 15 years from now four years from now oh but it will make no mistake about that this is why beaver is the perfect helpmate for the seven of cups it doesn't cut corners it doesn't do that it builds something solid and steady because beaver is all about family Beaver is all about their family. And remember, whatever you're building, whatever you're creating, it's going out to the world. And whether you like it or whether you don't, it's your family. <laughs> you know, good, bad, or indifferent. It, we're your fam, right? We're your fam. So um, just consider that. Now, enough about the Seven of Cups and its tarot card meanings. I think you get the picture. When you come, when you get to Beaver, I love, I love, love, love some of the facts about Beaver's just plain all the facts will 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 tell you so much about the seven of cups so first of all beavers used to be enormous they could be eight feet long and weigh 200 pounds giants beavers in the ice age now they're smaller for lots and lots of different evolutionary reasons now that might be speaking to whatever these dreams are that you have um my understand that the, the things that I share with you guys are not, they're not sentiments that I've made up. Some of them I have, some of them are truths and eye openers and all that kind of thing that I've experienced myself. But I listen to other people and I listen to their stories and I incorporate those teachings in with what I'm doing when it's the right time. And in that, you know, somebody might think, well, you know, I don't really help the, the world so much. Or I don't really, you know, do a spiritual practice like I want to because I have to be a dental hygienist because I do this. But if I'm sitting in the dentist chair and the hygienist tells me some amazing story and I happen to tell that story because it's relevant to something that's being taught or being shared or whatever, that dental hygienist then has done their spiritual work. Um, uh, 
I don't remember who it is. Uh, one of the one of the celebrity psychics uh, I I followed once upon a time. I can't remember her name, but anyway, she calls it a cleadon. When a message is inadvertently passed through you onto other people. Well, there are millions of people that come to my websites every month. You know, there are thousands of you guys here, and those met, so that gal or that guy who's doing the dental hygienist work is now working in the spiritual realms, maybe unbeknownst to them. So Beaver is a great one to say that, you know, maybe your dreams were to be, you know, a really well-known author or this or that, and, you know, all this stuff that you now consider pie in the sky, but A, it doesn't have to be pie in the sky. You could do it anytime you wanted, and B, what if you've been doing the work all along but just haven't realized it? Let me say that again. What if you've been doing this work all along but just haven't realized it? Ding, 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 jingle all the way, dun, 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 dun. bingo. Okay, the other thing I love about beavers is their little teeth are orange. And why I love that is they're creators. They're creators of their own homes, of their own reality. And orange correlates to the sacral chakra, which is about what? Your passion, your drive, your, your zest for life. So literally, when a beaver goes to gnaw down a tree, it is literally sinking its orange sacral chakra tephases. Right? That's what the beaver fit. My family used to, let me do it again. So my family who watches these videos, right? Aunt Mick, yes, Aunt Bernadette doing the beaver face. All my family loves it. You, you heard it here first. Um, that'll probably get shared as a gif around the internet 9,000 times, much to my chagrin. Um, but anyway, so um, it, you, you got to literally sink your teeth into what you're passionate about and what you're ready to work for. Now, notice I've never said work hard. I've never said that. You don't have to work hard. What does hard mean? What's hard for you is not hard for another person. Sometimes when I look at people and like, I'm working so hard, I'm like, <laughs> and you ain't never going to get man where in life. Because if that's working hard, boo, boo, wee. You got a lot of, you got a lot of learning to do. Now, but that's wrong of me to think that. That's just dumb. And I'm spiritual, might I say. It's very judgy, judgy. Um, I'm more into matchy, matchy than judgy, judgy. But, but, but what if I have a wrong idea about what working hard is? What if I have worked so hard because I have an idea about what working hard is? I've worked too hard or against myself or against the flow or against the universe and everything could have been much easier. I'm certain that that's true in many circumstances. Now, where all of that is going in, any of those cups that you want that are run, you know, running around on that card, you can have them. You just got to turn into the beaver. And you've got to be honest with yourself. That's, that is not the easiest thing in life. Now, beaver's tails, have you ever seen their big giant tail? They can grow 15 inches long, be six inches wide, and they use them on both the land and the water. In the water, it's about swimming, using it as a rudder, um, slapping it, you know, in, in warning to other beavers. And on dry land, the tail props them up. They can sit upright and they can be kind of a counterbalance. But you see, when they do that, they create a, they create a tripod kind of thing. Well, it would go, yeah, you know, it creates a tripod kind of thing, which reminds me of a pyramid, which tells me that when you're propped up like that, um, you're gathering all of your energy, all of your power from the bottom, and eventually it's going to go and shoot out the top of your head. Nothing could be better. Well, a lot of stuff could be better or the same. When you're wanting to achieve a dream or get a goal is to get yourself a solid, stable place. But also when you're going through the emotions of it, be able to stir yourself, you know, like a rudder. All of that to say, get your ass in gear. Okay, that's that's the bottom line of it. Get your fanny in gear. Let's get her done. And don't be fooling yourself. And you may need to ask outside sources. You know, I ask people all the time, like, do you think this is too much? Do you think this is too little? Do you think because I'm I don't want to operate in a vacuum, right? I want to be able to give you guys what you want. You'll see me always asking you guys questions. What do you like? What do you don't like? What can I give you more of? What do you want less of? And I take all of that into consideration. 
Now, on Beaver, remember, they're like the kings and queens of adapting and morphing. No two branches are going to be alike. No two rivers are going to be alike. No two dams are going to be alike. And what's interesting is when they, um, when they navigate water, they have nose and ear valves that shut out or shut down to keep the water out when they're submerged. And they've got a transparent third eye, like a third eyelid that acts as goggles so they can see under the water. And then the lips that close behind the oversized teeth that allows them to transport the branches without drowning. Is there anything else that needs to be said about beaver energy and medicine in your life right there? Like you can switch back and forth with beaver energy from the logic to the emotion, back to the logic, back to the emotion. You can stop yourself from drowning and still be building at the same time. Uh, you know what? Uh, beaver is a spirit totem and power animal. Uh, may go in the list for be for spirit totem and power animal of the year because it is just it is a powerful animal. Okay, so um, just just one more thing to us to us dams may look like a big fat hot mess of brambles and sticks with no order no design, just, you know, they threw a bunch of crap out there. That That's not what it is. Believe me, they know what they're doing. And they're not trying to win any kind of, you know, architectural awards. They're just trying to, you know, house their families and keep them from harm. And every branch and every twig has its place. It's there deliberately by design. And it was a choice that the beaver made. So this is a call for you. This is not the time for you to be disorganized. And I know a lot of you, you know, you're like me, you're an artist of, in, you know, in your own right, you're a creative. Um, and I just happen to be a creative that can also live in the place of organization and plans and all that. But that's, that's the Scorpio in me, right? I've got to have a plan. I've got to know where am I going? What am I doing? And, and then, and then marry that with the creative dreaming, with the water, the energy of the water, right? Because a scorpion is a land lover. They don't water, please. And they're fire, right? But Scorpio is a water sign. So you start getting the actual animal together with the sign. And even if you just take it from the, now, there's steam being created. Okay. So steam can be great. It can get the wrinkles out or it can scorch. Woo, it can scorch. A southerner who's made many, many pots of iced tea in her life, steam can scorch. So I hope that was helpful. And I love that this card came out for you guys deliberately probably this time of year because we're coming up on the new year. And this like thing, this, 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 I don't know. I don't know what we've been in. We've kind of all been in a cocoon for most of this year. It's not going to be like that next year. And I hope that you just embrace the, this little critter. And I hope you have many, many conversations and meditations with this little critter because beaver can really help prepare you for the year to come. And I'm telling you now, people are so sick of the nonsense. They've really just gone you know the word blanket. I'm going for what I want. I love that. And I want you to have everything that you want because you can. Just don't deceive yourself. Just don't fool yourself. Be like a beaver. Plan it. Sink your teeth into it. Your little orange teeth. And get with the program. And you can have anything you want. All right. I love you guys. Thank you so much for spending part of your Saturday with me. Um, pick up your copy of the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the spirit animal goodness, all the zodiac signs, all the everything signs, all the spirit animals, you know, all the daily readings. Get it all dwelling. So what's the most important thing going through this weekend and into next week and into next year? You know what? Say it with me to stay well.